Hello, and welcome to Spicy Toast Gaming. Thank you for tuning in to Spicy Toast Gaming and our first episode of a new series of Path of Champions 101. We're going to be teaching you everything you need to know about Path of Champions, and we're just going to assume that you know absolutely nothing about the game, so we don't skip any information that you need. Now, Path of Champions is just a game mode in a larger game of LOR, so before we can discuss Path of Champions, we first need to teach you what is LOR. Hope you enjoy. So some brief points just to break down what LOR is, or lore as some people call it. It is Legends of Runeterra, that's what the acronym stands for. It's a digital collectible card game. So you're trying to collect a bunch of cards, and then with those cards, you are building a deck. And then you're using that deck to fight other people with their decks, and you're trying to um, come out on top. Now, it is a strategy game, both in the building of the deck, but also in the playing of your cards. You're trying to think a couple moves ahead and be a bit more methodical. Now, now this is quite a affordable game. Um, for one, it's free to play, but also it's not trying to get you to spend real life money buying cards. Most other uh, digital collectible card games, they'll be free to play as well, but then they're trying to get you to buy random card packs, whereas Legends of Runeterra is giving you plenty of ways to get cards um, for the region you care about, giving you a lot of random cards as well, but also giving you ways to get exactly the card you're wanting and not have to rely on random card packs. It's far more um, reasonable and affordable than any other game on the market for digital collectible card games. Also, it is in the world of League of Legends and Arcane, so if you're familiar with those properties, you will see some familiar faces. Let's take a look now at the cards and how they are set up. In game now, and we're going to take you into a match, but first, we just want to show you what a normal card looks like. Now, this is a unit card right here. There's units, there's spells, equipment, there's a lot of different types of cards, but generally, the bread and butter of what you're going to be playing are unit cards in most situations. So, some important aspects uh, to be mindful of when you're looking at different cards is the mana pool or mana cost right here. Also, whenever you're looking at cards, if you hover over any element of it, it will normally tell you what that does. So here, cost. How much mana you need to spend this card. Um, this is something you're normally wanting to be balancing if you are making a deck, is having cards across a wide variety of costs. That way, you always have something you can play every round. Here we have the power. So this is how much damage this unit deals when it strikes. And then this is the health, how much damage this unit can withstand. Then like it says right here, if it reaches zero, this unit dies. So if this card was attacking and then the enemy also had this card and it blocked, the one power would hit the two health and so the card would lose one health, but it wouldn't die. Now, some other important aspects. This card has some card text, so it has a special effect. Now, not all cards have these, but it is something to look for when you're looking at cards. Also, the wording is normally very important. So you see here, the first time you kill a unit with a spell, grant me to one. So the first time you, as a player, you play a spell and you kill a unit. Here, it doesn't say enemy unit, so it could be one of your own units. If you kill it with a spell, grant me 2-1. So that 2-1 means 2 power and 1 health. So this card would go from a 1-2 to a 3-3. Three, three. Also, important thing to remember, this says grant. If it's grant, that means it is a permanent increase to your stats. Now, if this said give, that means it's only going to last for this round. So when you're looking at cards, that's very important to pay attention to. If cards say grant or give, again, grant, permanent, always going to be increased. Give is only that round. Now here you can see it has this fearsome. This is a keyword. There's many different kinds of keywords. They do a lot of different things. We're not going to be going over all of them as they're constantly adding more to the game. 
and it would make this video far longer. But if you're looking at a card, just hover over the keyword and it will uh, let you know what it does. Here for Fearsome, can only be blocked by enemies with three or more power. Now we'll go into what attacking and blocking means um, after this card, but this one right here cannot be blocked by enemies with, or can only be blocked by enemies with three or more power. So right here, this unit, if it doesn't have this buff, is only going to have this one power, and so this card right here would not be able to block an enemy fearsome unit. Now, if you did get this effect off and it went to a 3-3, this card would then be able to block an enemy fearsome unit. So this is just one example of um, what a keyword is. Here, the last important aspect in the top right, you see what region this card is from. If you're making a deck, in most situations, you can only use cards from two regions. So, since this is Shadow Isles, you can only use this card in other Shadow Isles decks. Now, I'm not going to go too much into um, deck building, as this is more of a tutorial video trying to help you for Path of Champions. And in Path of Champions, you're not really deck building. Um, so that doesn't particularly matter, but it is something to know if you're planning on playing the PvP version of uh, Path or of Legends of Runeterra. Now, PvP, you hear someone say that that means player versus player. So you're going against another real life person. If you're doing PvE, that means player versus environment, and that means you're playing against essentially the computer. Just something to bear in mind. Try not to use any. Um, terminology that you might not know. All right, let's go and play a match and see how this actually um, all comes together. In game now, and I hope you are ready for a lot of information because we're going to be explaining a lot of aspects of this game in a very short order. So this is the start of a game and this is what it looks like. You start it with drawing four cards and you're given the option of what's called mulligan. So you can try to replace a card if you don't like it. So some of these cards here, this one it costs 3, 3, 1, and 4. Now I'm actually going to re-roll uh, this right here. This is a spell card and it requires a unit to be on the board. So we don't really want that to start the game out. We also don't want this card right here because it costs 4 mana. We want to be able to play... Um, some cheaper cards at the start of the game. As you see over here, we only start with one mana. So we'll hold on to these two cards. They're relatively cheap and should be able to play them in short order, but this is where you're able to try to prevent getting too many high cost cards. You can try to re-roll some of them and this is called the mulligan stage. Now, once you have chosen the cards uh, you want to re-roll, you have to hit okay. Once you hit OK, your decision is locked in and you can't change it. So we're going to get rid of these two. The enemy got rid of three. And now it is the first round. What does he want from me? So as you see, we both start off with one mana. The enemy played their one mana to play this card. And they are now down to zero. If we take a look at the card, you see here it has that one cost one power and one health, Shadow Isles card, and has a special effect. Last breath, create in hand another random last breath follower that costs three or less. Now, last breath, these abilities take effect when the unit dies. So anytime you're not sure about a card, you can just right click on it or tap it if you're playing on mobile and it'll bring up the card so you can better look and read at what the card does. This is going to be very important when you're first starting out and really trying to learn all the different cards and what they do. So if this card dies, it would give you another card that has a last breath effect uh, that costs three or less. Now for me, I got a little bit of bad luck and I didn't draw anything that I can play for one mana. You see here, this is the attack token. That means the enemy will be able to attack and it's my turn to defend. On the left hand side here, we have these two crystals. 
These are called the Nexus. So I have my Nexus, and the enemy has their Nexus. So the point to win is to reduce the opponents to zero, that's how you win the game, and you have to protect your own so it does not get to zero. Now they will be able to attack, since I can't defend, they're going to be able to get me down to 19. So I have the option to play something, but since I don't have anything to play, I'm going to pass. That's going to give the opponent their opportunity to attack. So they just declared their attack. They put their unit on the board, and then they committed to it. The attack token is now gone, because you can only attack once per round um, in most situations. Now, I would be able to place a unit here, if I had it on the board, to block. Unfortunately, I do not have a unit, so we're just going to have to hit Resolve to let them hit our Nexus. So, they were able to hit us. Our Nexus is now down to 19. So, very sad. Now, if I had anything to play, I could, but I just have to pass to the enemy. The way you move on to another round is if you both pass um, back to back. So I'm gonna pass right here. The enemy, since they have no mana, is probably also gonna pass and it's gonna move on to the next round. All right, so it's now round two. You see we got two mana. Now every single round, you're going to get one more mana here. Any mana you didn't use in the last round is going to be converted into spell mana up to three. That is what these three little circles are for. Now this mana, you can't use it to play units, but you can use it to play spells. Right here, we have a three cost spell. So you can tell the difference with units and spell cards just by how they are shaped. So right here, this is a unit card. You see its rectangular border. This is a spell card. It has this circle border right here. So this spell, it costs three, three mana. It's going to summon a Dauntless Vanguard, and it's slow. That means we cannot use this spell in response to an enemy attack or a um, enemy spell. We have to use these spells proactively, not reactively. This is the Dauntless Vanguard, which it will summon. So we'll play this right here. As you see on the right-hand side, it's highlighting how much mana it's going to take. Now, with spells, you can use either type of mana for it, but with a unit, you have to use your normal mana. So right here, we could play the spell, but if we try to play a unit, it'll say you don't have enough mana, because it cannot use that spell mana. So we will um, commit. One thing you can do, if you look at this, that's uh, called the Oracle's Eye, it will show you how things are going to play out um, currently. So if I would commit to this, you can use the Oracle's Eye to see what would happen. If that went through, I would get that 3-3 unit. So once I commit, the enemy will then have the opportunity to play one of their cards. Um, they can't play a unit card to react to the spell, but if they had a spell card that was fast um, or burst speed, they'd be able to play it. Alright, so it went through, it used up all of our mana to make this card. The enemy was then able to play a card after, but it's our turn to attack. attack so we have our unit here, and when you have all of your units placed, you can then commit to your attack. You see the attack tokens highlighted. We'll use the Oracle's Eye. We see the attack token is then gone. Alright, so let's commit to this attack. The enemy decides to block. Let's take a look at their card. So another one cost, one power, one health, last breath, summon a spiderling. So if this card dies, it's going to summon this spiderling right here. So let's resolve this and see what happens. So their card died, and then it summoned that spiderling. Our card lost one health, it's now down to two. So I hope this shows you kind of how you're supposed to be um, playing the game. You're trying to play your cards to the best of your ability 
while removing the enemy cards, but the end goal is to just destroy the enemy nexus. So we're not going to go through the whole game. I just wanted to kind of show you a lot of the basics of how the game operates, uh, how it plays, how your mana works, and how spells work. All right, I hope you enjoyed that. We'll go look at some more aspects of the game now. I hope this was able to help you understand the basics of how the game is played. To finish off the video, I just want to take you through kind of the menus and the different tabs here for Legends of Runeterra and explain what they're all used for. So right here we are on the home page. There's a big button here for going to play in Path of Champions. We'll be diving deep into that um, game mode in all future episodes. Right here we have the Weekly Vault. So as you're playing the game, as you're completing quests, winning or even losing matches, you're getting experience. That experience is all counted up here, and then every Thursday, it gives you rewards based on how much you've played. Um, so those rewards, a whole bunch of um, cards letting you complete your collection. It is quite generous, which is very nice. Up here, another little menu if you need to go check your settings, see your friends, or this is where there are going to be your daily quests or event quests. So by completing these quests, which are, which are essentially just completing different actions in your matches, often incentivizing you to um, play with cards you maybe don't play with, this helps you uh, get some more experience for that weekly vault, um, increasing the amount of cards you're going to be getting every single week. Now here we have the play tab. So this is where you can play against other players with your decks, play against AI, uh, this challenges tab, this are essentially tutorials. Every expansion they're adding um, some new mechanics or keywords to the game, and then when they do that they also add a challenge to kind of explain how it works just so you're um, all caught up. The collection tab here, this is where you can look at your decks, all the cards you've collected, and then these other ones are all um, cosmetics, so like card backs, or a special board, um, things that if you want to customize the way you look in game essentially, you can do that, but it's really not needed. The rewards tier, this is very, very nice. So every single region, they have their own theme and their own way they play, and you're, you're going to have your favorite. So what you can do is you can go through, pick whichever region you like, click on them, and then here you could say activate. I don't have that button since I've already completed the rewards tier, but just like the weekly vault, as you're playing, you're getting XP, and that is getting you more and more rewards specifically for the region that you like. So this is just another way that as you're playing the game, it's rewarding you for playing and giving you more cards just for playing the game, not with real life money. This is by far the most generous um, digital collectible card game on the market. It's very nice that it's not trying to get you to spend money on cards. Right here is a event. So if there's an event going on, this tab will be here, otherwise it won't be. So if you're in game and you're wondering why you don't have that or why it's a different icon, uh, it's because it's either a different event or there is no event going on for you. So this event that um, happens. Again, um, while an event's going on, it's going to be some quests you can complete, or just by winning or playing matches, you get these little icon <laughs> coins. Uh, it's different for every event, but as you get that, you go through and complete the event, and that's just giving you more cards or some fun um, cosmetics. You can do this for free, or you can also unlock the premium tier for, I think, it's like five to ten dollars, so pretty reasonable and easy to complete. Now, lastly, there is the store. So, if you want to get different skins for your cards, um, just giving them interesting level up animations or making them look um, special, you can do that. Doesn't actually affect how you play in game at all. Or if you want like a special board. So, if we looked at one of these, see your side of the board. You could buy a special board that might have different music or different effects. 
Again, none of these really matter in game. Um, it's just cosmetic things you can buy if you want. But again, the game is never pushing you towards getting these. Now, you can buy wild cards if you want, which lets you exchange them for um, specific cards within the collection. You really don't need to do these. You're going to get these wild cards automatically through the weekly vault or the rewards tier. So you really don't need to buy them. Um, you can buy cards if you want. I would highly not recommend it. The game is very generous. If you're wanting to support the game with real life money, I would say just buy a cool cosmetic. But this is a game that it's free to play and you really don't need to spend money to get anything out of the game. Um, it's very good in that way. All right, this is the kind of wrap up for this video. So this is just showing you the basics of Legends of Runeterra and what it is. This tutorial series though is actually focused on Path of Champions and all future videos will just be focused on that game mode. We just wanted to give you the basics of what the whole game is first though. I hope you enjoyed the video and I hope you have a great day. Thank you so much for watching that whole video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, hit that like button, subscribe, maybe hit that notification bell. We're putting out daily videos for Path of Champions, sometimes multiple videos every single day. And if you wanna support the channel, hit that join button down below for more information. That's gonna keep me here doing what I love, which is putting out content for all of you. I hope you all have a great day.